to the word of God himself. Are you understanding me? And he says, Satan, it is written. The true Jesus will make what is written to be enforced in your life. Forever, oh God, your word is settled in heaven. The true Jesus will make sure the things that are settled in heaven will be established in your life. All you need is his presence. What are the things the true Jesus brings freely? Whatever we have mentioned, that's what he brings freely. Look at what he said in the book of Matthew chapter 10. If you are dealing with the spirit of the true Jesus, nothing will be monetized. Nothing, nothing. I repeat, if you are dealing with the spirit of the true Jesus, nothing will be monetized. You will never give any money, raise any altar, do any fasting. That was why when Jesus met blind Bartimaeus, he asked him, what do you want me to do? He said that I may see. He didn't say go for three days dry. He didn't say go for seven days fasting. The true Jesus does not prescribe fasting. He's not a, he's not a pharmacy of fasting. He's not a, he doesn't prescribe. Yes, he's a great physician, but not the physician that right prescribe because he is the way the truth and the life he is the physician who enters your body and takes away the disease he does not treat you he enters you I say he enters you Christ in you is the hope of glory if the spirit of him will raise him from the dead dwell in your mortal body dwell in you it will quicken your mortal body and eject the cancer and eject the disease and eject the bondage and eject the disease out of your body that is the Jesus we serve it doesn't matter the kind of sickness let him enter you he's a great physician he will take away the disease he will take away the disease he will enter your body and walk on your cells and walk in your tissues walk in your arteries walk in your kidney take away the disease he's the God of our flesh there is nothing he cannot do there's nothing that's why you say, I am he that lives that was dead. The true Jesus does not just heal. He kills dead. He kills dead. Lazarus was dead for four days. There was no altar that was raised. There was no money that was given. There was no offering. He stood and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the dead have no choice but to let him go. He said, a time is coming that the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Man. And those who hear it shall hear us. They shall live. The true Jesus, how does he deliver? Not by water. Not by salt. Not by oil. Not by prayer clothes. By the voice. By sending his voice. Because the voice of the Lord breaks through the cedars. It quenched the evil flame. He can send the voice to your village. He can send the voice to your village. The true Jesus don't send prophets to your village to approve charms. The true Jesus send his voice to your village to deal with the enemy. Are you understanding me? The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord make the dare to come to bring forth that is what it is. Look at the book of Matthew chapter 10. He said in Matthew chapter 10 in verse 7 and as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Are you there? Cleanse the lepers. This is the true Jesus talking. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Wait, wait. Casting out demons. Come, 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 come. You see, casting out demons is not stand like this. Let's assume you are demon possessed. Where are you coming from? Where do you come from? Kakamega. What are you doing in this body? I am lamenting it. <laughs> what else do you want to do in this body? I want to take his marriage away. 
That is not casting of demons. That is displaying that you are a deity. You are a super demon caster. Casting of demons is not by discussing with them. There's a generation that casts demons by carrying the presence of God. They carry the presence. When Jesus enters you, the demon leave you alone. That is casting out demons. People will say, Jesus asked the, the man that was mad in the grave. He asked the how many of you? Remember Mark chapter 5. Jesus asked that man because he has not died on the cross. So to deliver people from demons, you have to talk. But when he died and resurrected, he said all powers in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore go ye. I gave you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. That is the way the true Jesus cast out demons by giving you power. God bless you. By giving you power. Not by discussing with somebody. By giving you power. He said you shall cast out demons. He put power in you. And the demons leave you. And whoever is demon possessed. When they come near you. The demon drop out of them. Because we are in the days of his power. The Bible said in the days of your power. Your people shall be willing. All you need. Is the presence of Jesus. He said, cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Do you see it there? Freely you have received. Freely you have received. That was why the woman that was, that was, that was sick for 12 years never gave him anything. That was why Lazarus came out. Mary and the sister never gave him an offering. Because freely receive. Freely give. Let me give you a secret. Every activity of darkness is an opportunity for Jesus to be glorified. That's why he does not collect money from you. When Jesus sees the sick, it's a privilege for him to reveal that he's a healer. When Jesus sees the oppressed, he wants to reveal he's a deliverer. That's why he does not collect money. Every work of darkness is an opportunity for Jesus to reveal himself. That's why he said the son of man did not come, but to seek and to save that which was lost. For the son of man was made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil let me give you the final word you may have your said revelation how do you recognize a church that is carrying another presence apart from monetizing prayers deliverance and all of that stuff that would duplicate bible practices fulfilled in christ or fulfilled in the new testament church that would du duplicate bible practices fulfilled in christ or fulfill the New Testament church. The Bible practice that was fulfilled in Christ, the use of oil was fulfilled in Christ, the, the, the water fulfilled, killing of animals fulfilled in Christ, but the Bible practice fulfilled in the New Testament church was when Jesus took the mud and put it in someone's eyes and said, go and wash. And the Bible says he went and washed and came back saying, Jesus, that's why you see none of the disciples again go and read the old book of Acts you cannot find where an, a disciple carry mud and put in someone's eyes because that was fulfilled in the early church he was saying I'm going to establish apostolic streams that when you go there you wash in the river of truth and your eyes will be opened the clay represent humanistic philosophies human cultures and traditions and ideologies Jesus was speaking in signs and wonders so but when you see another Jesus today he's going to carry clay and use it to pray for you because they don't understand the mystery of the true Jesus Revelation chapter 3 let me give you the last word that we pray actually I'm lost for the time they gave me <laughs> they told me I'll close by 2 minutes after 11 but I, I don't know now whether it's 2 minutes after 11 are you in Revelation 3 
want to show you what is missing and what you should go for. If you want to get things freely from God, you want to operate with the true Jesus. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Look at what he said. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Hey, tell your neighbor, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. This scripture is not for unbelievers. Though. It was sent to the church. The church that re resembles our church today. I mean, the, the body of Christ as you know it today. Remember, in the body of Christ today, we have become so rich that we are telling Jesus we don't need it again. Pe people will tell you, you're only a Christian if you can buy a car. If you can have a private jet, you're a man of God. That's what people are saying now. So we have become like this, this crazy church called the lukewarm church. The Lodatian church. So that is how we have become. So look at what Jesus is saying to us. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, you see the voice again, the voice again. My sheep hear my voice. The voice of a stranger that will not follow. The devil knows that all you need is to hear the voice of Jesus. So he raised other voices to confuse you. For everyone, Elijah, what did Jezebel did? She raised 450 lying prophets to confuse the voice of God. Today we have a lot of lying teachers, lying prophets, some duplicating, some stealing, and all of that stuff, just to confuse you from hearing the voice of Jesus. The time has come for you to look at the pastor and say, get off the way. If you cannot show me Jesus, get out of my sight! That I may know him! his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed unto his death every child of God must come with that passion that I may know him pastor I want to know him drop the oil drop the water don't give me salt don't give me oil reveal Jesus to me I want to know him don't pray for me reveal him to me all I need is Jesus if I have him I will have everything I stand at the door and knock whosoever hear my voice and open the doors I will come in and sup with him and fellowship with him and he with me it will be a sweet communion that will multiply his presence in your life when the presence of Jesus is multiplied you enter into his rest rise on your feet I am true Makili Kabo Setelia Jesus now more than ever we are saying a stormy weather a stormy weather all God's children lift up your voice and sing that song to get together for we need for we need oh Jesus now Oh Jesus now, Jesus now, more than ever, more than ever, we are sailing, we are sailing, a stormy weather, a stormy weather, August children, August children, oh, should get together, for we need 